and call the name of Jesus for the next 60 seconds. I want you to lift your voice and mention that name. Mention that name. That is the place where you abide. That is your sustenance. That is the secret to your deliverance. That is the name that lifts you out of misery into his presence. In the next 60 seconds, can you mention that name? All over this room, can you mutter that name? Can you mention it with faith? Can you mention it with, with faith, with strength? There is power in your name. Miracles happen in your name. We lift our voice to praise. It's you that we see. As we lift our voice to praise, it's you that we see, it's you that we see. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it and they are safe. His name is our address. His name is more than just a word. That's where we reside. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you tonight for your presence. We thank you for what you will do in this place. We give you glory. In Jesus' name. Can we just... Um, is it okay for us to pray before we sit down? Just in the next two minutes, if you can, I want you to lift your voice. Let's just pray in the spirit for two minutes. Just open your mouth and pray in the spirit for two minutes. Build up your holy faith. Build up your most holy faith. Let faith be built from your inside. Lift your voice and just pray. Let the atmosphere be changed and altered as you pray. Let there be a shift in the spirit. As you pray, let faith rise from your spirit. Let divine energy be released from your inside. Come and pray, come and pray. Build up your expectation as you pray. Come on, stir up your spirit, man. The Bible says, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. Come on, edify your spirit as you pray. Let your spirit be edified with faith. Lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice. Esapela bada, bara de kada bara, esata, bara de kuwa, em 
something new in my life something new today in my life something new in my life oh Lord today and in this place do something new in my life something new in my life do something new in my life something new here today something new in my life oh Lord His presence is here do something new in this place something new here today something new in this place hallelujah father tonight I pray in your presence that you visit every one of us I pray that there will be transformation by the power of your word by the ministry of your spirit I pray that you will ignite a fire in us I pray that there will be activations in this place lift your hands I pray that there will be activations in this place let a fresh anointing come upon somebody let somebody's destiny experience a shift from glory to glory. Do miracles, bring healing, bring restoration, set us at liberty, because that your name be glorified. In Jesus' great name, shout a bigger amen. Shout a better and a bigger amen. Please take your seat. God bless you. I welcome every one of us to Pneumatic on ground. Every one of us here and those who are streaming live online from different parts of this nation and beyond. God bless you. I trust that tonight will be another experience in his presence. In Jesus' great name. Something new in our lives. Oh Lord, when I come into your presence, I'm so happy. Mm, when I come into your presence, I'm so glad. This is why. For in your presence, there's the anointing. Your spirit moves around me in your presence. Anointing presence. Let's take it up from the top. When I come into your presence. When I come into your presence, I'm so happy. Sing it if you believe it. When I come in. To your presence, and this is the very reason in your presence. Your presence 
in your presence And I feel your spirit here in your presence there's the anointing and your spirit moves around me in your presence the anointing cause in your presence there's the anointing and your spirit moves around like I feel it right now in your presence the anointing when you come before the presence of God you must expect to encounter his spirit you must expect to encounter his power it's more than just the words that you hear there is something there is an activity that goes on around you there is an activation that the Holy Spirit is doing in your life. Changing you and transforming you. According to the image of the Christ. From glory to glory. And when it takes you from one level or one dimension of glory to the next. Certain things that look like yokes and limitations are broken of your life. For in your presence... There is the anointing, your spirit moves around me, in your presence, the anointing breaks Sing it one more time with faith in your spirit, for in your presence, there is the anointing, and your spirit moves Whatever yoke you came with tonight is being exposed to the presence and the power of Jesus Christ. And like the walls of Jericho, they are falling down. I said they are crumbling down. Yokes of ignorance, yokes of delay, yokes of any kind. It doesn't have to be a miracle service for you to receive a miracle. His presence produces miracles naturally. But you have to be conscious of it. Until you become conscious that anything happens in His presence nothing happens until you become conscious that in his presence anything happens nothing happens and i like our hearts to be open tonight for what god will do in jesus name turn your bibles let's uh, take a journey in the word of god i want to teach something that i consider will be a blessing to every one of us something that will really um, bless us tonight increase our knowledge in God and uh, take us to another level in him you know Jesus said in John chapter 17 that this is eternal life that they will know you the only true God and Jesus your son whom you have sent I believe in miracles I believe in the move of the power of God and I believe that God is ever ready to release from the bounties of his blessings into our lives but most of all I believe that God's desire is to take us further in our journey of knowing him knowing God is important it is the ultimate for every believer it is the ultimate and it's something that we should desire 
tonight I just pray that this teaching will increase us in our knowledge of God and will give your destiny your walk with God and your life a meaning in Jesus name Amen can you just reduce it a little so that we can teach 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 to 15 I want to teach on what I title tonight the spiritual man and this is very fundamental this is foundational to our faith this teaching is meant to give clarity and insight to our work with God uh, this teaching is meant to define for us God's concept from the Word of God of, of who and whom a spiritual man is it's a very broad subject uh, but I trust that we will use today and then probably next week to see how far we can go I want your hearts to be open because for many of us this has been your desire uh, many of us especially those of us who love the Lord so much sincerely passionately pursuing God it is important that your work with God is articulate chasing after God is not like running through a maze no chasing after God is not shadow boxing following God is not supposed to be mystical it's a journey it's a process by which your understanding will keep growing as you comprehend whom God is and his ways become your ways so that you can walk in his path and truly become the person that he has created you to be so for those of us who are truly interested to know the Lord and to pursue him I want you to really open your heart tonight and listen because God will come to articulate our work with him for many of us and increase us in our knowledge of him in Jesus name first Corinthians 2 verse 14 and 15 okay let me just read from uh, my Bible here It says, but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. So the scripture there identifies to us two kinds of men. The first we see in verse 14 being the natural man the Bible tells us in that verse 14 that the natural man is described as the natural man because of certain limitations that were articulated in his life as seen in that verse the Bible says that the natural man cannot understand spiritual things because they are foolishness to him so the natural man lives in a plane that is different from God's plane. He sees things from a different perspective. It is not within his nature to understand what it means to be spiritual or to understand what spiritual things are. The Bible says they are indeed foolishness to him. That means what a natural man calls foolishness may just be wisdom in God's sight so he lives at an opposite end from god's perspective as far as life is concerned and the bible says he cannot even know these things if the bible had said the natural man cannot understand spiritual things and stop there that would have been fair enough because understanding means to comprehend but the bible says not only can he un not understand but he cannot know knowledge speaks of information understanding speaks of comprehension for you to understand a thing you must know that thing knowledge is information acquired it is possible to acquire informations that you don't understand for instance it is possible to have an android device that you don't understand how to operate but you know it's an android device you have you know information about that device but you don't understand the synergy between this information for it to produce result for you the Bible says that this, the natural man cannot understand spiritual things 
and he cannot know them meaning that spiritual knowledge are informations that cannot be received by a natural man he said because they are spiritually what discerned but verse 15 says a spiritual man or he that is spiritual is the one that judges the word judge there is the word discern is also the word to understand that the spiritual man is a spiritual man because he can understand spiritual things he can comprehend things that are beyond the physical dimension he says but he himself another mystery cannot be understood by men so a spiritual man or a natural man cannot understand spiritual things but a spiritual man can understand spiritual things but he himself cannot be understood by men that means that there is a relationship between the information and the knowledge that a spiritual man understands that interacts with his life in such a way that his life becomes mysterious like the things that he has understood and therefore he cannot be understood by a natural man so there are, these are two kinds of men as we see there the natural man and the spiritual man and today we want to talk about who the spiritual man is but before we talk about the spiritual man we need to first of all understand who or what man is before we understand what a spiritual man is we must understand what man is first john chapter 3 let's just do a little introduction john chapter 3 from verse 3 nicodemus you know the story came to see jesus by night nicodemus was a ruler of the jews for you to be called a ruler of the jews you had to be a pharisee you had to be schooled in the five books of moses you had to know and understand the law and the prophets that qualifies you to be a teacher being a ruler in jewish custom means being a teacher being one that is superior in knowledge and so nicodemus was supposed to be at the optimal aspect as far as jewish custom was concerned yet nicodemus came to jesus at night they had looked at Jesus' life. They had seen all the miracles, seen all the things that Jesus did. Even how he taught the law. His interpretation of the law was different from what they did. Or from their interpretation. And they knew that this was a wisdom that was more than what they had understood. So Nicodemus came to Jesus and said, No man can do the things you do except God is with him. In other words, what Nicodemus is saying is, The reason why you are mysterious is because God is with you because the, this God himself is mysterious to us all of God that we know is what we have been taught from the law and from the prophet but what makes you mysterious is the fact that God is with you and then Jesus uses his statement to open up a discourse Jesus answered and said to him most assuredly I say to you unless one is born again he cannot see the kingdom of God so nicodemus said no one can do the things you do except god be with him god with a man simply means the kingdom of god has come because the kingdom of god is god residing in and within men if you can hear me say amen if you can hear me say amen that means not everybody can hear me so let me talk to those that can hear me if you can hear me say amen don't get lost though we are just starting just pay attention so what Nicodemus said on whom to Nicodemus what he explained is what we call the kingdom of God God residing in and amongst men so Jesus decided to take it up from where he stopped Jesus said since you have brought about the concept of the kingdom which I came to preach let's go from there he said except a man is born again he cannot see the kingdom of God meaning he cannot perceive the kingdom of God from his natural senses go on from verse 4 now Nicodemus said to him how can a man be born when he's old can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born next verse we are reading down to verse 8 quickly 
Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. For the wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. So Jesus was trying to explain the concept of the kingdom that Nicodemus brought before him. Jesus said it's not possible for a man to see, in other words, to perceive the kingdom of God except he is born again. That's why where we read says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 that a natural man cannot understand spiritual things because the kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom. So it is not possible for you to look with your natural eyes and then see or perceive this kingdom. You have to go through a process that Jesus calls being born again. And of course, I will explain what being born again is later. But being born again was not what Nicodemus thought it was. Entering into the womb. and Because Nicodemus was trying to understand spiritual things as a natural man. That was why his response to everything Jesus was saying was from the natural perspective. He said, how can a man be born? How can an old man like me be born again? You lie enter my mother's womb. He kept trying to understand a spiritual concept using natural procedure or means just like we have a lot of christians who are trying to know god and live the christian life and pursuing god naturally and what what is the end of that religion dead works you keep going through the motion but there is no life there is no substance inside of that and jesus began to talk about the born again concept Jesus said, except a man is born of the water, of water, and of the spirit. Notice that Jesus said, except a man be born of water, and of the spirit. He didn't say of the water, and of the spirit. He said of water and the spirit. To be born of water speaks of natural conception. <coughs> Amen. To be born of water speaks of natural conception. <laughs> I know many of you, your understanding of this scripture will change. If you read this scripture from other translations, especially if you dig it out from the original concept, what Jesus was explaining in verse 5 there was two kinds of birth. Give us this verse 5 again. Jesus said, except a man be born of water and of the spirit. To be born of water is to be born naturally as a man. The reason is because when a child is in the womb in form of a fetus or an embryo, the environment of that womb is surrounded by what? Water. That water is called amniotic fluid. Now Jesus said for a man to experience the translation into the spirit or into the kingdom of God, he must first be born of water naturally. Then he can now translate into being born of the Spirit. He said it is only then that he can now enter. So Jesus has gone from perceiving to interaction. The first time he said, except a man be born again, he cannot see, he cannot perceive the kingdom of God. Now Jesus says, except a man who is born of water, who is born naturally, and then experiences the new birth, which is by the Spirit of God, except that happens to a man he cannot interact or participate that is what it means to enter the kingdom of god if you can hear me say amen, amen. then jesus went further the next verse he said that which is born of the flesh is that is flesh that's the reason why i said that the last verse where we just read was explaining your natural birth as a human being and then your spiritual birth the next verse which is in context just explains what i just said to you it says that which no where are you go back to verse six uh -huh. it says that which is born of the flesh is flesh so as a man 
your mother gave birth to you naturally as a natural man that which is born of the flesh is what flesh carrying the image of flesh because you were born naturally like a man and then the bible says that which is born of the spirit is spirit that is the reason why i explained the last verse to mean that it was talking about the two kinds of birth natural birth and spiritual birth so that which is born of flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit and then in verse 8 jesus said something very profound still talking about the concept of the new birth which is the foundation of the spiritual man because for you to live you must be born so for you to have a spiritual man he must first experience that new birth jesus said the wind blows where it leads you can tell the sound but you cannot tell where it's coming from or where it's going so is everyone that is born right of the spirit let me explain what he means here the wind is blowing you know that that's a knowledge you have but you don't understand how it blows where it is coming from or where it's going to remember the first scripture we read that a natural man cannot understand spiritual things so you have a knowledge of the fact that the wind is blowing but you cannot understand that knowledge the bible says so is everyone that is born of the spirit you can only know that this man carries something different in him that differentiates him from a natural man but you cannot understand what makes him different as a spiritual man if you are here say amen can we pray for one minute because i it, it looks like many people are not understanding this can you just pray in the spirit for one minute say lord open my understanding please pray because this is just i'm just trying to lay a foundation but our understanding needs to be open to this concept herein lies the wisdom herein lies the ability that makes you to function truly as a man that is born by the spirit hallelujah so i said before we understand who a spiritual man is we must understand what man is many of us understand that man is a spirit that has a soul and lives in a body is that not so talk to me that is that not so okay let's turn it to miracle service it's all right let's turn it to miracle service huh and we can know the anointing is still here it's with the same anointing we are teaching the same anointing that we do the works so many of us especially from you know maybe sunday school class or you have read a book or so and then we have come with this concept that man is a spirit that has a soul and lives in a body but that is not true well you must understand that revelation is progressive amen so the information you had received earlier before now which is this when you put it side by side with the rev current revelation position of the spirit you discover that there are deeper truths than that man is not a spirit that has a soul and lives in a body that's not man now i'm waiting for you to stone me because i know i just shook some people's theology no stoning what is man because if you don't understand or know what man is you can't know who a spiritual man is and even though you are a spiritual man you will not be able to function as one contrary to other beings that exist for instance god we know god is spirit isn't it john chapter 4 verse 24 says god is spirit we know that angels are spirits psalms 104 verse 4 says he makes his angels 
spirit. Hebrews 1 verse 14 says, Are they not all ministering spirits? We know that demons are spirits. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12, talking about demon spirits, demons, he described them as unclean spirits. And in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12, the Bible calls them spirits, spiritual wickedness. Amen? So we know that God is spirit. We know that um, angels are spirits. We know that demons are spirits. But man is not spirit. Man is a complex creature. In fact, based on nature, based on the nature, the nature and the composition of all the beings in the universe, man is the most complex creature. Based on nature and composition, man is more complex than God. No, you didn't hear what I said. Because by now I was expecting some rumbling. <laughs> I said based on nature and framework, eh? man is more complex than God. What is man? Let me show you some scriptures. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23. Paul was ending his letter to the Thessalonian church giving them final blessings instructions and then in this verse 23 of first Thessalonians chapter 5 Paul made a statement of hope it was like a prayer for them he says now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and then he goes further to talk about how that sanctification can be complete he says and may your whole spirit soul and body be preserved blameless if man was a spirit that has a soul and lives in a body, this, this, this verse would have been incorrect. It would have been written like this. I pray that you are sanctified with your soul and your spirit. Because it would have agreed with the fact that man was a spirit that lives in a body. But Paul said, I pray that your whole spirit, soul, and body that means man is these three man is not one of them man is not spirit living in a body you know many people have that concept say it's just my body it's just mm -mm -mm. if it was not you paul will not make this prayer that your body should be preserved and it should not just be preserved alone but there is a state in which it should be preserved blameless till the coming of god why would god want to preserve your body till the coming of the lord if your body is not you so man is this three spirit soul body next scripture job chapter 32 verse 8 <laughs> Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see. I just, I pray that God will bring understanding to us tonight. He said, but there is a spirit in man. If man was a spirit that has a soul living in a body, he would have said, man is a spirit and the breath of the Almighty gives him. That would have been how this verse would have been read. But to show you that man is all of this, he says there is a spirit in man. So the spirit component is one of that which composes or one of that which comprises man. There is a spirit in man and the breath of the almighty gives that man understanding. Next scripture. Let's let's have like three scriptures so that nobody will argue again. Are we getting blessed? All right, Luke chapter 24. I'm trying to define for you who man is. Luke chapter 24 verse 36. Trying to just explain this concept of man and so that you can know why man is the 
summit of all of God's creation. Jesus just resurrected and revealed himself to his disciples. Now as they said these things, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said to them, Peace to you. Next verse. But they were terrified and frightened and supposed that they had seen a spirit. Go on. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do you doubt? Why do doubts arise in your hearts? He said, Behold my hands and my feet, that it is, my, that it is myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit... Can we read that line together? I want to go. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones. Can you touch your neighbor beside you? Just try and feel the person around you. Thank God COVID-19 protocol is no shake hands, but you can touch. The person you are touching, what you are touching, is it flesh? Touch again if there is bone. Is there bone? So there is flesh and what? Jesus, this is the word of Jesus himself. If you will argue anything, you won't argue what Jesus said. Jesus said, a spirit does not have flesh and bone, which is body. That means that man is not a spirit. Man is spirit. Man is soul. Man is body. To understand this, let's go back to Genesis. Genesis chapter 1. Let's try to just make a review of the creation of man. You will appreciate why I'm doing all these things when we start talking about who the spiritual man is. Let's look at the creation of man. How was man created? First of all, in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, the Bible says, And God said, Let us make man in our image and what? After our likeness. So the creation of man was fo supposed to follow two to three, three stages. He says, let us make man in our image and also after our likeness and let them have dominion. So man was supposed to be created in the image of God, after the likeness of God and have what? Dominion. And let's examine Genesis chapter 1 and 2 and see if this concept was completed. So the Bible says in verse 27 of Genesis chapter 1, and God made man in his image. Did he put after his likeness there? Is there likeness in that verse 27? Talk to me now. Is there likeness there? He said, male and female created he them. Verse 28, and God blessed them and said, be fruitful, multiply, you know all of that, and have dominion. So the man that was created in chapter 1, of Genesis was the man that God gave dominion to. Notice he used the word created. Genesis chapter 2, the Bible tells us in verse 7, and the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground. He didn't use the word create again, he used the word form. This is another stage of the creation of man. And he breathed into the nostrils of man the breath of life and man became a living soul. Now, many people read that verse and think that that was when the Holy Spirit entered into man. No. The Bible said God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. The Bible didn't say God put the Holy Spirit in man. Because that man that was created in the garden didn't have the Holy Spirit. Pick your stones. How many of us are enjoying the discourse? Just follow me. Notice also that the Bible says, and the Lord God. In chapter 1, it says, and God. In chapter 2, and the Lord God. So chapter 1 was creation of, ex um, uh, um, of purpose. Chapter 2 was formation of existence. The man in chapter 1 was the design was the portrait did you get my text message did you did you bring it bring those things for me uh, you, the book i said you should you design and all of that 
Huh? Okay. Okay, okay, no problem. I wanted to give an example. She's a, she's a, a fashion designer. I wanted to give an example, you know, using some of her, her wares so that you can understand. Let me give you an example. If a tailor wants to sew a dress, um, who will I use now? Let me use somebody. Okay, David, come. Okay, come. Give me another mic. I want you to explain something. Come, come stand here. Quickly, please. Give me another mic. Um, stand and face them. So, she's a fashion designer. Huh? Please, look at this example. She sews and makes clothes. She makes and sews clothes. You know, that's the reason why a fashion designer is different from a tailor. Huh? There are many tailors calling themselves fashion designers. <laughs> it's not true. A tailor just sews. The concept is given to the tailor and the tailor sews. But a fashion designer is one who invents a fashion trend for the tailors to imitate and create clothes with it. So this is a clothes, for example. Alright? And if you were to sew this clothes without seeing an example of it before, what are you going to do? In one minute, just tell us, what will you do? Without seeing the example, um, yes. it first comes as like an imagination. Yes. It first uh, comes like an, as an imagination, like a flash. So I just see it, and um, I see the person wearing, and I see how it looks, and then I put down a sketch before I cut whatever. Fab okay, see, she said... She sees an imagination of it first. The word imagination is from the word what? Image. And in chapter 1 of Genesis, the Bible says, let us make man in. So the first thing, hold on, hold on. The first thing is, she sees the man wearing the clothes that is already made. Finished. Then the next thing she does is to do what? To draw a sketch, create a portrait that looks exactly like what she has imagined. Likeness. Image, likeness. Then after that, she goes to begin to... So now, um, the concept of imagining the dress first and then sketching it. Does it take you as much time doing that as it takes to actually sewing the dress uh, imagining and putting down, down. Takes much time than sewing the dress okay imagining it and putting it down yes takes you more time than sewing okay which one is more rigorous let's leave the imagination part let's look at the likeness now you you create the sketch Making and then the sewing. Dress. <laughs> sewing the dress is more rigorous thank you please clap for them you can sit down both of you so Genesis chapter 1 God created that was where the concept was invented first then in chapter 2 God decided to bring about a sketch a likeness that's the reason why the person in the Godhead that took over creation of man in chapter 2 was called the Lord God the Lord God of course was speaking of Jesus in his pre-incarnate form that's why the Bible says in the New Testament that he is the image of the invisible God. It says by him and through him all things exist. So what God did was this imagination that I have fabricated. I need to create a portrait first. So that I can see how it will look like. And then the Lord God which was Jesus in his pre-incarnate form was the one who came and formed man. Because the purpose was that man will have dominion where? On earth. That's the reason why he decided in the formation of that man, which was when process came into play, he took out of the material of the ground. Because he had already said that this man must have dominion where? Not in the spirit, but on earth. So he took out of the material of the habitation and formed man so that man can legally and legitimately interact 
with this realm because this is the realm where man will have dominion then the bible says god took that man and planted him in the garden that means that the creation of man was not complete in genesis why are you clapping wait <laughs> you clap when you understand he said let us make man give us that 26 again let's go back let's understand the whole purpose he said and let us make man now this man will be in our image according to our likeness who is our likeness in the godhead it was jesus he says and let them have dominion now the reason why i say that the creation of man the concept was not complete i believe that the concept was not completed in genesis is because man if man was created in the image of god and in the likeness of god man would have been carrying god in him but this man that was created in genesis chapter 1 i told you genesis chapter 1 was the finished concept but when you look at chapter 2 the man that was formed there didn't have the complete concept of chapter 1 in him so the man in the garden which is adam was not totally all that god wanted that man was not carrying the spirit of god that man only had the breath of life in him that made him a living soul soul you see the concept of soul and body which was formed but the spiritual dimension of this man nothing was said about it in genesis i believe that god probably had it in mind to complete the creation of this man which was going to be putting his spirit to inhabit man so that man can completely be in his image and after his likeness i believe that god had it in mind to complete that process that was why at the center of the garden there was a tree called the tree of life if man had eaten of that tree man would have been completely in the image and the likeness of god being that man would have had everlasting life man would have been able to live forever but what you find in genesis chapter 2